Good morning, Johns Hopkins Global Health Conference. My name is Kelly Shen, and I'm excited to share with all of you some of the new challenges in CPR education and why CPR is important. So a little about me, I'm a rising senior at Sigur Heart Prep in Atherton, California, which is part of the Bay Area. Aside from being an aspiring pre-med with an interest in cardiology and neuroscience, I'm also an opera singer and I study at the San Francisco Conservatory. I'm a poet and I especially love writing nature poetry. And finally, I'm an avid bird watcher and can probably be found somewhere on a hike tracking birds. In the future, I hope to either become a cardiologist or a cardiothoracic surgeon. So around a year ago, I came across a research article on bystander CPR rates in China. And what I learned from it was shocking. CPR rates in Beijing and Shanghai, two of the world's most populous cities, were 11% and 4%. That means if you're suffering from a sudden cardiac arrest, there's only a one in 10 or 25 chance CPR will be initiated. In the US, the bystander rate is 46%, only one third of cardiac arrest victims receive CPR. And that led me to the question, why aren't more people performing it? And so between now and then, in order to learn more and tackle that question head on, I did a lot of research, got CPR certified and instructor certified, wrote to the CA Board of Education to enforce training in schools and start a nonprofit called Project Heart to teach my community about CPR and CPR resources. So first of all, why should you learn CPR? Well, cardiac arrest means your heart has stopped pumping blood. In medicine, we also call that code blue. Code blue is essentially a euphemism for being dead. And so CPR in emergency situations is basically like doing artificial pumping. It enables you to get oxygen to the rest of your body and more importantly to the brain to stop your brain cells from dying. In addition, you do CPR to alter the state of death. Let me tell you what that means. The classification of being dead or alive depends on the state of your heart. Once your heart has stopped, you're basically biologically dead. Dr. Sam Parney of NYU, however, has discovered that during the time in which your heart has stopped functioning, the brain is still going. It does not die in a matter of minutes like we previously thought, but rather it takes hours. This discovery was validated after Dr. Parney ran a large experiment on in-hospital resuscitated individuals when he found that many of them had a heightened sense of awareness while their heart had stopped and the EEGs showed the emergence of gamma activity and electrical spikes in their brain signaling consciousness. The brains weren't slowly dying, they were actually becoming more active. This research demonstrates that CPR is necessary not just to prevent damage to the cortex, but also to protect consciousness. In addition, after the introduction of CPR, death is in an absolute state but a process that could potentially be reversed in some people even after it has started. That is why it is so important to keep your brain alive so you can increase the chances of preserving optimal neural functioning. Due to infection control concerns during the pandemic, we have to consider a new angle, COVID-19. Three things happened in the past two years. Cardiac arrest rates increased, PR rates decreased. Emergency responders took longer to arrive. Bystanders worried they would burden the already struggling hospital system if they brought a cardiac arrest victim in and also did not want to contract COVID through mouth to mouth. In addition, one third of cardiac arrests occurred either had COVID already or were suspected of having it. Next, quarantine and lockdown meant there were less people around overall in an emergency, which led to a sharp decrease in bystander CPR rates in America from 30 to 23%. Finally, because EMS teams were struggling, it took longer for them to get to a cardiac arrest victim. COVID has highlighted that it is more pertinent now than ever that we can implement CPR. Even though we know CPR is incredibly important, a lot of people are still hesitant about performing it, and there are reasonable concerns surrounding CPR. Because of the pandemic, there is a risk of getting COVID from oral fluids such as saliva. A lot of people are worried about getting sued or breaking bones. Some people don't want to perform CPR on women since it can be misconstrued as sexual assault. And other people don't believe they have the expertise to give good CPR. But luckily, we can address those concerns. Here are some updates that can overcome some of these issues. First, the American Heart Association updated their CPR requirements in 2011, 
making it hands only. Even though mouth to mouth is still more effective, research has shown that doing hands only CPR will still boost survival chances and is just as effective in the first few minutes. Next, while there have been a number of cases, no one has ever been found liable for performing CPR. Good Samaritan laws protect citizens from lawsuits, meaning you cannot be held accountable for helping someone, nor can criminal charges be filed against you. In addition, breaking bones is okay. It takes a large amount of force to give powerful compressions, and if it takes breaking some ribs to save someone's life, it's worth it. If you have hesitations about performing CPR on a woman, you have Good Samaritan laws to help you. Finally, and most importantly, you don't need to be a licensed medical professional or have training to give CPR. As long as someone is unconscious, you should just dive in and start compressions on the chest. No need to check for breathing or heart rate, just push hard and fast, that is all you need to do. Now that you're informed on CPR, I hope you'll help your community enforce CPR education. This is a map where CPR training is required in high schools. The only states that aren't required are in light blue, light green, and red. Chances are that you live in one of the states that have CPR education as a requirement and that you haven't learned yet. I've interviewed a number of friends and classmates in other schools in California, and the majority of us have never learned. China, on the other hand, has made it a mandatory law to teach CPR in schools. But as is with America, enforcement is a completely different issue. And so I want you to talk to your local government, talk to your friends and family, talk to your school and community. If there aren't classes at your institution, invite firefighters to come in and teach. If you want to learn, sign up at your local. Let's get the states we live in to enforce CPR education. Before I end, I want everyone to have one big takeaway from today. Anyone can do CPR. It doesn't matter how young or old you are, how experienced or inexperienced you are. Everyone has the power to save someone's life and don't hesitate to use it should the situation arise. Thank you. Here are my references, acknowledgements, and my email, which I'll also put in the chat. Thank you so, so much.